This is a nice simple scratch project to create your own custom username. It uses the ask and answer blocks to build up different parts of a variable into your username. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to follow the instructions, go to 123code.org forward slash Z686. Okay, so the code is Z686. So just pop that into the box and click on start project and that will bring you to the instructions. So let's go down to step number one. So step number one is to create a new Scratch project and delete the cat sprite that gets added by default. So if I open up the green box here, I'll get the link to the Scratch website. That will open up a new tab. And I'm going to enter into the project editor by clicking on the create link up the top left. And this will load the project editor up on the screen. So I don't want the tutorial, so I'm going to close those. And I also do not want the cat sprite in this project. So we're going to delete that by clicking on the little trash icon in the sprite list. So step two. So we're going to edit the backdrop to say username generator at the top of the screen. So we're going to click on the stage backdrop in the bottom left of the project editor and then click on the backdrops tab at the top of the block polish and this will, will display the backdrop editor. So I'm going to click on the backdrop here and then click on the backdrops tab. And as we can see, we have the backdrops editor displaying now. So the next one is to select the text tool by clicking on the T button. And then we're going to choose a color from for the text from the color polish and choose a font. So let's click on the T. Um, Let's go for a kind of dark blue color. And the font here is in this drop down. So we have sans serif, serif, handwriting, marker, curly, pixel, and then some other ones as well. So I'm going to choose marker and go back to the instructions. So click on the top of the backdrop to add your text there. And we're going to type in username generator and then click anywhere on the screen. So let's type in username generator and then finally what we want to do is we want to make the text a bit bigger by dragging the corner of the bounding box and then we're going to move it into the middle but still at the top so as you can see once you click off it it gets this bounding box around it with the with the circles where you can drag um, so I'm going to choose one at the corner. I'm just going to drag it out bigger like that. And then I'm going to grab it in the middle. And just kind of get it so it's at the top, but in the middle. So let's go back to our instructions and to step number three. So that's to add the retro robot sprite from the sprite library. So if you need to see how to access the sprite library, you can click on the little link there for a tip. Um, but to do it, you go down to the bottom right here where we can choose a sprite from the library and we're going to click on the magnifying glass icon. And this opens up the sprite library. So I'm going to filter this by clicking in, typing in robot and we can see the retro robot here. It's got a few different costumes. So I'm going to click that and its default costume shows there. So I'll just drag that robot into the middle. Okay, so step number four is to create a username variable. So we, we will need to create a variable called username to store the text of our username as we build it, as we're going to build it up in different parts. So when you create a variable, a small orange rectangle appears in the stage area that displays the current value of the variable. We don't need this to, to display, so we're going to add the following code to hide it. So when green flag clicked, hide variable username. So let's create our variable by going into the variable toolbox and click on make a variable and we're going to call it username and you can leave it for all sprites as default and click on OK and now we can see the little box that appears showing the current value of username. Now there's two ways we could hide this. We can uncheck the box, the checkbox here and as you can see, that turns it off. But also you can do it by code. So let's drag in uh, when green flag clicked. That's from the events toolbox. And then go back into the variables toolbox. And there is a hide variable. And we're going to choose our variable username. So when I click on the green flag, 
the variable username is no longer shown. Okay, so let's move on to step number five, and that's to get the robot to say the instructions. So the, our robot is going to give the instructions for using the username generator. So we're going to add the following code to the bottom of when the green flag clicked blocks of code. So say I am the random username generator robot for five seconds, and then say to get a username, answer these questions. So let's go into the looks toolbox, and that's where we can get the say for a certain amount of seconds blocks. So we're going to add in two of those. And I'm actually going to copy and paste this text. So I'm going to select the text, right click and copy, go in and paste it. I think it's for five seconds. So depending on the amount of words you're getting your, your sprite to, to say, you'll need to increase the, the amount of seconds that it displays on screen. So this will create a speech bubble. So let's test it out. We see it there, it creates a speech bubble when it gets to that block of code and it'll display that speech bubble for this certain amount of seconds. So we saw the first one display for five seconds, one, two, three, four, five, and then the second one displays for two seconds. So let's get the text for the second one. So right click and copy and paste it in and we're going to display that for five seconds as well just to give a chance for the reader to see it. I might actually move this down a little bit just so it doesn't cover our username generator text here. Okay so that's step number five. So now the next step, step number, step number six, is to get the first letter of their name. So this is how we're going to build up the username. So we're going to add in an ask block. So this block lets you ask a question. A text box appears on the screen where the user can enter in an answer and that answer gets stored in the block answer, uh, the block answer here. It kind of works like a variable but it's it's attached to this ask block. So let's go in and get that. That's in sensing. So we've got ask and wait. So what text do we say? What's your first name? So let's again, let's copy that text and paste it in. And then we're going to get a set username to, and we're going to get the letter one of answer. So the first letter of whatever answer is given for the first name. That's what we're going to, we're going to set the username variable to. So let's get this set to username first. So that's in variables. So let's drag that in and change it to username. And next we want to get this letter of block. So that is in operators. As you can see, it's a green block. So we're going to get letter one of Apple. So if we left the block like this, it would get letter one of Apple, which is A, if that was set to two if we get letter two of Apple, so that would be P and so on. So I'm going to change it back to one. And what we, instead of Apple, we want to get the answer of what the person, of what the person answered here. So again, into sensing, there should be an answer block. You see it's underneath the ask, and we're going to put that in instead of Apple. So let's try this out. And um, I'm going to, to test it, I want to actually display my username for the moment. So let's click on the green flag. So I'm the random username, username generator robot. To get a username, answer these questions. So the first question is, what's your first name? So my first name is Alan. So I'm going to type that in and click on the tick. And that should have set username to letter one. So let's get username to display. Here it is here. And as we can see, it's set to the first letter that I, I typed in there for my name, so A. So the next step is step number seven, and we're going to get their favorite animal. So we're just asking kind of a few different questions, and based on these answers, it will build up the username. So we're going to use the ask block again, and the set username too. Um, and this time we're going to join the username 
the, uh, the username with the answer. So the username variable with the answer. So whatever they add on. So uh, if they choose cat, it'll add it on to the first name, the first letter that they of their name. So let's try this out. So I could duplicate this by right clicking on the block and duplicate, or you can go back in and drag and drop in. So let's copy the text. So what's your favorite animal? Paste that in there. And then set variable. So set username two. And this time we're going to join two pieces of text together. So into the operators toolbox and we're going to get the join apple banana block. So that would join apple and banana. But what we want to join together is the username variable which has the first letter and then the answer of this ask block. So again, we're going to get the answer block and put it in here. So each time you use an, um, an ask block, it overwrites the answer block. So the answer block will store the answer to the last question that was asked. So it overwrites it. So let's try this out again. So just to make things go faster, I'll reduce the seconds that these display for. So I'm the random user generator robot. And what's your first name? So again, I'm going to type in Alan. What's my favorite animal? I'm going to go with a lion. So we can see here the username is now A and then L-I-O-N, A lion. Okay, so let's move on to step number eight we're going to get the year they were born. So again, we're going to ask uh, what year you were born. So you use the ask block on exact same code as the previous step. We're going to join on the answer to the end of the username. So this time I will duplicate. So I'm going to duplicate these two blocks here and then drop them in. And I'm going to get my text for the question. What we, what year were you born? Paste it in. And that's that done, that step done, because the blocks are the exact same. It gets the answer and it joins it onto the end uh, here of the username. So let's run through this again. So Alan, favorite animal. This time we'll go with a uh, cat. And year you were born. So I was born in 1979. So we can see here it's put on 1979 at the end. So a cat 1979. Okay, let's move on to the next step. So we've built up the username. And if you wanted, you can ask different questions. What's your favorite color? What's your favorite drink? Or, or just random questions like that. So it'll be different for every person. Um, but at the end, we want to do just a little animation. So we're going to make the robot just turn around 360 degrees to spin it around. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a repeat block and we're going to get the robot sprite to turn clockwise 10 degrees. And if they do that 36 times, then that will make them uh, turn 360 degrees, which is a full, one full rotation. So let's go in and add those. So I'm going to put back in my hide variable username. I'll go into control and get a repeat block and change to 10 to be 36. Go into motion and get my turn clockwise block. And we're going to put in 10 degrees. So let's test this out. So let's just put in some different ones just to see it in action. So there we see it spin around. Oh, I'll need to show my variable. So J penguin spelt incorrectly, 2008. Okay, so let's move on to the next step now that we've added our animation. So finally, what we want to do is get the robot to say the username. So what we're going to do is just add in a block at the end, a say block, 
and we're going to join your username is with a space at the end and then the username variable. So let's do that. So we're going to looks and there's a say hello for two seconds, which displays it for two seconds or say hello and it doesn't have any seconds. This permanently displays it on the screen unless you get it to say something else. So we're going to drag that at the bottom. I'm going to get a join block in the operators and type in your username is your username is and it's important to put the space at the end just so your username doesn't join in right after the s we need a space after that so we're going to grab the username variable that we built up using these questions um, and let's test this so, so gives the instructions so I'll put in Mary I'll put in shark and 2011 so it does the spin and then says what the username so your username is M shark 2011 so that's the end of the project it's quite a simple project but it shows you how variables work how the ask and answer block works and how to say blocks uh, work as well as joining uh, letters and words together. So there's a there's a few different things you could do to kind of change it. You can come up with your own ideas, but you could ask some different questions. You could even get the you could add in the extension um, for text to speech, and what that does is it, it uses robot uh, voices to speak out whatever text you get you give it. So you could get your robot to, to speak the username. So let's try this out. So let's put in Alice uh, dog and 2010. So there you go. That's the, the robot voice speaking it out. So I hope you enjoyed that project. If you have any questions or comments, just comment in the video below. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to get our weekly coding projects, make sure to click on subscribe. And if you have any suggestions on what you'd like to see us make next, just comment in the video below.